Let's see if I can. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Because I've got the sound all the way turned up, and as far as I know, this is on. I'll check and see. That's on? Okay. I can't hear it over here. Oh, my. Can't get it any closer, I don't think. That'll work? Does that work? Do I need to lean over here all the time? <laughs> that could be really uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I'll do the best to speak loudly. How's that? And hope that everything works out fine. Um, happy March 1st. March is my month. I love March. <laughs> um, do we have prayer requests or praises to share? Yes. I just can't even imagine what they're going through. And... Yeah. I don't have a bell. <laughs> I should have brought my bell. I should put a bell on my thing. Yes. Time to stop talking, folks. Okay. Yes, we really can't imagine what they're going through in Ukraine. Um, you know, thankfully, we've never been invaded by Canada or Mexico. Um, we have some fairly secure borders just because of the geography, whereas they're right there surrounded by these people so it's just yeah we need to pray that God will intervene that God will take care of things that would be so wonderful Ukraine Ukraine okay we are having trouble here we are having trouble hearing yes we are well I've I thought it was on I've got it turned all the way up back there I know that is that on now because it's just a little slide thing that turns it on and off. No, not helping. Thank you. I don't know what he does that's special that I can't do. I have to talk with him. Anyway, yes. Yes, I, uh, I need prayer. My husband needs prayer. Uh, spent six hours at the hospital on Sunday afternoon about... And then he couldn't do rehab yesterday because his sugar was too high. Okay. So, uh, and he's very, very weak. Um, I guess it goes along with five bypass. I have no idea because I've never experienced that before. So, um, it seems like it would go along with that. Yeah. So, That's a tremendous change. Energy. And you need a little energy. <laughs> yeah, I need a little uh, something. <laughs> and I'm forget. Oh, your husband's name is Jim. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> Anybody else? When's your surgery? My surgery is the 10th. Yeah. So, yes, pray for me. I appreciate that. Would be good. I do have a praise. Um, not only did my countertop get installed last week, but on Saturday they came and they put in all the drywall um, for the, there was a leak. I don't know if you guys remember or not, but yes, there was a leak and it damaged the wall down in the basement. The finished part of the basement, <laughs> of course. And then I was having my garage drywall put in because it had insulation, but no drywall on top of it. And the insulation was not holding up well that way. So it they it's wonderful. I've been waiting since, oh, about July <laughs> for, to have this done. So it's all getting done. God's taking care of all of it. I didn't have to yell and scream at them, which I don't do anyway. Anybody else have a prayer request or a praise? Yes, Sharon. I think my children are going on. I think they determined probably use assisted living, but now we're trying to crunch the numbers and see if there's any way we can save 
Okay. Um, all my brothers and sisters are kind of building on me, but I feel very comfortable. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can pray for that. And she has tons of stuff to make sure gotten rid of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very difficult. Because um, our generation, I think, even though we might not use the thing, you know, we're very attached to them. Whereas I know Melissa, my daughter, doesn't seem as attached to all that like yeah. our generation. Does. It's very different. The attitude is really so different. <laughs> She yeah. Like no. <laughs> My daughter likes what she likes, and it's not yeah. what I have. I mean, so. it's fine because yeah. everybody, you know, has different tastes. But yeah, but they want nothing from the past. Yeah. Just. Right. Yes. Well, there may be ways. Yes. Yeah. That would probably be a great idea. Her expertise besides her supplies. Mm -hmm. and how and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Yes. Because we like our stuff to be used and not just pitched. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Had a long conversation with uh, uh, Sarah I and her parents have moved and now they're having to get rid of everything. And yeah, it's tough. As she said, our house doesn't have room for that stuff. So, okay, well, let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get started on our lesson. What is it? Five verses or something we're doing today? I think we'll make it through. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who is in charge of everything. We don't have to worry about where the world is going and what's going on. Father, we can put our faith and trust in you. We do get concerned, Father, because we see the suffering that's going on and the things that just don't seem fair. And Father, we just pray that you will intervene, that it will be so obvious that it is you who is making um, things right. Father, we just pray that that will be a great testimony to the world. Uh, we pray, too, that you'll act in the lives of many of these um, Ukrainians who are having to stand and fight for their country. And, Father, we just we do pray that you will watch over them. Um, we pray that they are believers and that they will be trusting you for that. We also want to lift up uh, Doris and her husband, Jim. Father, we just pray that there will be a way to get the uh, um, their Jim's strength built up and his blood sugar under control and all of those things so that he can continue to undergo the therapy that he needs. Father, we pray too for Doris. We pray for an extra measure of grace to be poured out on her, giving her the energy and the patience and all of those things that are necessary when we're taking care of somebody. Father, we want to lift up Mary Ellen. Father, we pray that um, you'll be able to work things out for her her care from this point on. And Father, just watch over the family um, as they're making decisions and doing the things that they need to do. We pray especially for all the stuff that she has to get rid of. Father, we just pray that it will go to uh, places where they will really appreciate it. Um, they'll be able to use it, you know, like the crafts and things like that. Father, we want to ask that you'll be with this church as they continue to make decisions about what's next. And Father, we just want to thank you for the wonderful pastor we have. And we ask that you'll continue to bless him and bless us as he follows you. Let us follow him. Father, we just ask that you'll be with us now as we study your word. Um, the more um, I'm looking at 
any of the scriptures that seem to have come across my desk these days. It's all about trusting, obeying, and just allowing God to be God in our lives. And Father, I just pray that you'll continue to encourage us, that you are the one who can handle all things, that you love us beyond anything we can possibly imagine, and that you know each and every one of our names. You know who we are, and you know all the things about us that is necessary to know, and you can make judgments and do things in our lives that are far beyond anything we can possibly imagine. Help us to trust you no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Throw it over here. So did you enjoy this week's lesson? It was pretty easy homework-wise. Just had to look up a few thousand verses, but it's good practice, right? <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to complete our study of, J of chapter four today, and we're going to have a video by Wayne Barber, so it's going to be a treat. Um, do we have handouts for today? Okay. Um, this chapter has been really full of very practical information, hasn't it? probably um, more so than the other chapters. The other chapters said things like be doers of the word. This gave you very specific instructions on what it is you need to do and how you need to draw closer to the Lord. Um, so what we need to do is uh, see how those truths are changing things in our lives. Have, have you had any sense that you know, you've grown closer to the Lord or you've chosen his way instead of your way. I, I see yeses. Yes, go ahead, Carrie. Yeah, I think over the course of this, not just this chapter, but this book, it does make you appreciate the Lord's ways and what he's doing in your life. Oh, yeah. We need to remember those things. Anybody else? I think one of the things that made an impression on me, maybe because I like words so much, is the fact that so many of the things we looked at require us to make an active choice. It's not a matter of just falling into these patterns. We have to actually say, okay, Lord, you are the one that I am following and you are the one who's going to guide me. And I choose your way instead of my way in this case. And I, because I think one of the big problems that we see is they were not choosing God's way. They were choosing their own way. And that's why James had to have these pretty severe um, admonitions to them. <laughs> he warned them over and over, didn't he? If you do this, you are not going to flourish. This is going to be the end if you choose to be proud and think that you have a better way. So I think you know James has been very blunt about what's going on and how we need to make good choices. Okay, well, let's go ahead and dive into verse 13 through 17. Um, so what's the situation that's being described in verse 13? There's a person who wants to do what? Choose his own way. Okay. Trade and make a profit. He's gonna go someplace, trade, make a profit, and that's gonna be good for his business, isn't it? Is this a bad thing that he's doing? It's not bad. It's what's in his heart, his reason for doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
But he, if you don't keep him in the center, Yeah, that's not good. No, you so around boasting about it either, you know. That's true. I've made all this money and I'm so great. Yeah. Because who's the one who gives all good things? It's God. I mean, that's what it says earlier in the book. So we see that it's not that it's a bad situation, it's a bad mindset that this person has. He says, I'm going to go there and I'm going to make a big bunch of money and have such a great profit. And then what's he going to do with it? He's going to spend a whole year there, isn't he? Okay, what's going to go on with maybe his family back where he's from? We don't know. It, they, it isn't even in the equation, is it? doesn't say, and that's going to be able to take care of my family, and I'm going to be able to do these good things, and I'll, you know, give the temple more stuff, or Jesus, if he is a follower. <laughs> and so we see him basically thinking of himself and how it's going to be a good thing for himself. This is turned all the way up. <laughs> Unless you know some magic other button that I haven't pushed. It turned up. Turned to the highest level. But this is all I get. Oh, that's much better. What did you do? Which one did you push? <laughs> okay. I can do that. It's good to know. I need somebody to write down the instructions for all these things. <laughs> oh, what about the streaming? Were you able to? No, I'm going to have to get somebody who's a little more confused like that. Okay. I haven't forgotten about the chairs. Yeah. Okay. Have you been busy? <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate what you do. Thank you for coming here. These guys are so happy. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Well, you're supposed to build treasures on, you know, not here on earth, but in heaven. So. Yeah. You don't see a focus on that either, do you? He's going to make a profit, um, and profit's going to him. It's not going to be used for anything. So we see that. It's not an unusual situation, but it really doesn't have a good attitude behind it. Um, so making plans without praying about them, you know, putting them in God's hands is a problem. Do we ever do that? Okay. Yeah, we do. Because we figure this is something I can handle. I don't need God to tell me to do this or that. It's you know, it's Why just the way it is. Hmm? Why don't we ever learn? <laughs> we're, we're slow learners. Do you remember we're called sheep? Sheep are not smart. <laughs> they need a shepherd. <laughs> so it's not that it's a bad thing. It's that it's got a bad purpose behind it. Okay. Um, when I made my appointment for getting my eye done, I carefully considered the most important things to me. And the most important thing was precept. I said, okay, got to do it on a Thursday. So I'll be ready to go back to class on Tuesday. I'll be able to drive and all. And my daughter is doing a concert. Um, she's part of the Merrimack Orchestra on the 6th of March. And I said, I want to be there. So those were my two guiding principles because that's what's important to me. I mean, and we need to really think about those things. I know she would be heartbroken if I couldn't come. I'm just going. I love coming. Actually, the Olmsteads are in the same orchestra. It's fun to see them, too. <laughs> but it's we need to think about things that are important in our lives, and they're God things. They're not the just regular stuff. Um, before we met Jesus, we made plans for the future, didn't we? 
Well, yeah, you wouldn't be here. Did you plan to go to college or to have a job? Yeah, you had to do those things. So making plans is not bad. We just have to acknowledge God as we make those plans and put him first. Okay, so let's move on to verse 14. What's the point here? We're not in control. We are not in control. <laughs> and it's hard to remember that sometimes. <laughs> we think we've got this. In fact, what does it describe us as? A vapor or a mist. And you've seen, you know, the vapor like that comes out of your mouth when it's cold. Mm -hmm. And it's here and then it's gone. It doesn't stay there or anything like that. And that's what we're like. If we go back to um, James 1, 10, verse 1, or verse 10 of chapter 1, what does that verse tell us? Okay. And who are we talking about here in 1, 10? The rich, rich man, okay? And it, it shows what he really is. Um, says the rich one is like a flower of the grass that will pass away. They don't last, do they? Unfortunately. It would be so great if flowers lasted for a long, 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 long time, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if the weeds would not last forever and ever and ever, we would be in much better shape too. But flowers, what, part of their beauty is the fact that it's here and you can appreciate it and then it's gone. I went out last night, there was a beautiful sunset and I, my house is on a hill and you can see for a long way and you could see the, the red gold and then, it, you know, would just barely be pink and then it just kind of came a became a blue just because there were just enough clouds to reflect the light and it was just gorgeous but I was outside for probably two minutes to see it because then it was gone but things like that they have a value in their brief life and we have to remember that we have value in our brief lives lives too it doesn't matter if we don't live a thousand years. They used to live that long back in the Bible, didn't they? Yeah, a long, long time. But we don't do that anymore. We've got, what is it, 70 years or maybe 80, something like that in the Bible. So our briefness can still be a beautiful thing if we use it right. If we're well fertilized, too. <laughs> But nothing is lasting in our lives, is it? We can't hold on to the things. And the things that are eternal, how do we know they're eternal? Because God. God said so. <laughs> That's always a great answer, but it's true, isn't it? We cannot see heaven. But we know when we do things to help people, when we care for people, when um, we pray and, and you know put our lives in God's hands, those things are eternal value. And those things are being kept for us. They're those things that are thrown before um, Jesus' feet because of his great sacrifice for us. So we have to trust that those eternal things are going to be there. And we're just going to live our lives and do the very best we can to have a whole bunch of those eternal things. And the other stuff, yeah, we, we have to do things. I mean, we have to go to the grocery store. I'm sorry. You know, it isn't always a godly trip. Sometimes it's just, I just need to run in and grab some stuff and people are in your way and you get frustrated and everything. But it could be, couldn't it? Because you can look around and you can go, that lady looks like she would be somebody who needs to talk with somebody. And you just see that little frown on their face. and you Go over and talk to them while you're standing in line. So her, she's got more groceries. It's okay. You know? But we can turn anything into a godly opportunity. We just have to choose it. 
Okay. So nothing is lasting in our lives. It's here today, gone tomorrow. And we looked up a whole bunch of verses in the Old Testament that speak about this. What did you see in Psalm 31? What is David asking for? Okay. It says, my times are in your hand. Yeah. The day you were born. He asks for rescue from his enemies and persecutors, but he says, first off, my times are in your hand. Mm -hmm. So that's a real, you know, setting it in God's hands and saying, if it's my choice, I would ask that you protect me and that you rescue me. What about Job 12, 9 through 10? Yes. It is the Lord. It's in his hand that all of these things are. Job 14, 5, it says, since his days are determined and the number of his months is with you, you have appointed his limits that he can't pass. I mean, that's pretty over all encompassing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There is no way that we can choose to change what God has said is going to happen. What about Psalm 139, 16? Because he saw my substance before I was born. Yes. Mm -hmm. He actually saw you in your mother's womb mm -hmm. and already had these wonderful plans for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And I am so glad that my mother's womb was a safe place. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's so wonderful to know that God has known you since you were just an idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What about Proverbs 27, 1? This is a, a warning. What's the warning? Don't boast about tomorrow. Don't boast about tomorrow. <laughs> I think Paul said that, you know. Yep. If you boast about tomorrow, you know, is that going to happen? Not necessarily. You have no control over it. Everything is under God's control, not ours. And that includes how long we're going to live and what each day is going to bring into our lives. Have you started out a day thinking one thing and it ended up totally different? Many, many times. Yes. Yes. With all these scriptures in mind, what should our attitude be toward our daily life? Start off trusting the Lord with the day. Can you go wrong with that? No. Yes. And be humble. Yeah. And recognize that God loves you and you can just be loved and do what he tells you to do. And it'll turn out okay. We saw in Psalm 39, 4 through 5, it says, O oh Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few handbreadths and my lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Think about Vladimir Putin. I think he's got a lot of pride, don't you? And arrogance, thinking that he can run things. We need to pray for his salvation. That's right. You know, sometimes I think the impossible is like, cannot believe these things are happening. And so then I also refer back to um, how God has used bad people to, to accomplish. And, and that's like, there's got to be a reason for this madness. Yes. You know, and, and, and God uses good people, bad people, whatever, for his mission. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you just think about when we did um, Daniel, it's been a long time. But do you remember Nebuchadnezzar actually took him captive and, um, you know, had the nation there in Babylon. But think of all the wonderful things that came from that. And did Babylon stand? No. Eventually God brought them down too. But it was in God's timing. 
But for a while, he needed his people to be in Babylon. And so that's where they were. When we did Ezekiel, we saw the same sort of thing. He was supposed to be a priest. He was supposed to serve in the temple. And here he was out in the boondocks in Babylon teaching people, you know, basically their Sunday school lesson <laughs> and reminding them that Jerusalem's not going to be there when you go back. And so he, his whole destiny was so different from what he thought it was going to be. He was a good person, but God used him in a bad situation to make mm -hmm. it better. God yeah. is also awakening our compassion for other people and other countries that we don't even know. True. Because <laughs> we do hear what's going on, mm -hmm. and we do have compassion on them. We want the very best for these people who are haven't done anything wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're just being taken over yeah yeah okay um luke 12 13 through 53 adds more adds some information directly from jesus which is always a good source isn't it in fact we're going to see a whole bunch of information directly from jesus what you see in luke 12 13 through 53 Okay, the rich foolish person. <laughs> I like that. Um, but he was asked a question about family inheritance, mm -hmm. like as if he's a lawyer or something like that. And he took this opportunity to teach about being not very bright, being greedy, mm -hmm. possessions, and all of these things. And he does it through a parable. We love his parables, don't we? I mean, it's so neat to see them. In 16 through 21, it's the parable of this rich man. Mm -hmm. And he is the one who's made all of this money. And he's going, boy, am I great. Look what I have done. Mm -hmm. In fact, he sees his life stretching before him as what? Rich, rich, rich. He's got it made. Yeah. It's going to be an easy life from here on out. Mm -hmm. And what did God call him? A fool. Mm -hmm. Because what was going to happen? His soul was going to require that. Yeah. So his long life amounted to one evening. Mm -hmm. And he was glorifying who? Himself. 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 I did this. I did. It's going to be great. I'm going to have all of this stuff. And God said, no, this is the end of your life. So do we see a parallel in James 1, 11? What do we see about the flower? The sun comes up, scorches things, and the flower fades. Yeah, I mean, you've seen them, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Especially in St. Louis summers. Actually, probably in Texas summers, too. <laughs> but we see that in the midst of his pursuits, the rich man will fade if that's God's will. So the truth is what that Jesus is teaching. What's your lesson from this parable? Because he gave the parables to teach a lesson. Oh, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. <laughs> don't don't your treasures. Yeah, don't yeah, boast about your treasures and everything like that. Mm -hmm. What kind of riches should you be seeking? Heavenly riches. Yeah. Riches that you want to be rich toward God and not rich toward you, because those are the things that are going to last. Okay, in verses 22 through 40, we get some commands. I love instructions. <laughs> I'm a rule keeper, so it's, except when I drive. Anyway, um, so what's the first one that we see in those verses? Don't be anxious about your life. 
How many times have you read this in the past two years? Yes, this has been one of those where we need to hear it nearly daily because of all the things that are going on to make us anxious about our lives. It is, it's been very difficult. But notice that it's specifically things that we use all the time. Food, clothing, the necessities that we have. We're not supposed to be anxious about them. So if there's not enough toilet paper, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Worse things could happen, right? Or as my daughter was saying, she wanted to make bread and she said, Mom, there, there's no yeast. <laughs> yep, there's a run on yeast now. I don't know what the latest thing is that they're running short on. Is it baby formula or something like that? Yeah. It's just craziness. So we're not supposed to be worried about it. Can we mobilize and say, hey, I know somebody who's been stockpiling some. <laughs> Maybe she'll share some with us. But there are ways around it. God can provide, can't he? And, you know, God does provide, but, you know, then it's old as I am. You know, there's other ways you can feed that baby. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah, we do, we really need to stop thinking that this is the only way things can be done. God has so many ways he can do things. I mean, he's way more creative than we are. We kind of get stuck in a rut with things, but he has just unbelievable resources and he can always make it better. And notice that these are necessities. He's not saying if you want tickets to a basketball game, um, you know, pray about that, you know, <laughs> and I'll give it to you. If, what? I mean, some people really like basketball that much, but this is about food and clothing, necessities, things that you really need. Don't be anxious about them. You're going to be fine. What are you supposed to look at? Consider what? The flowers in the fields. Okay. Are they beautiful? Why do we garden? Because we want those beautiful things in our yards. And so we look at them and we say, God did that for something that is here for one day. I mean, lilies last literally, they bloom one day and they're gone. And they are so magnificent sometimes. It's just, it's wonderful to see them, but they don't last. And if God is going to do that for something that's just a joy, it has no, you know, real effect on our lives other than we can appreciate it. Do you think he's not going to clothe you? I mean, He's going to take care of it. <laughs> you will be clothed, yes. Maybe not the way you want, or maybe better than you ever imagined. Yeah. So we're not going to worry about what we eat and what we drink, how we're clothed. What does it tell us to do instead? Seek God's kingdom. Okay, if you're worrying all the time, one, <laughs> you're not in control of these things a lot of times anyway. And two, what's your focus? It's on you, isn't it? If all you're doing is worrying, you're worrying, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Yeah, you need to focus on God, don't you? So that's why you seek his kingdom. And his kingdom is what? Eternal, yes, it lasts forever. It's another eternal treasure you're um, saving up. And all these other things will be added to you. Mm -hmm. There are story after, I, I don't know about, well, you probably have read a lot of things of people from the past, saints from the past who had hardships and God came to their rescue. God provided whatever it was, and it was done miraculously, so they know it was God who did it. Mm -hmm. So if he can do that for them, is he not going to do it for us? Mm -hmm. He will, absolutely. Mm -hmm.
think about that. Yeah. And he does it even for millennials who are <laughs> the bane of my existence sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so we're not supposed to worry and we're not supposed to be afraid, are we? Is there a difference between worry and fear? I think so. What's the difference that you see? Okay. Anybody else? So there is a difference. And it's almost like fear is is something that gets in our mind and we can't let get rid of it. You know, you can worry and worry and worry, but when that fear takes place, it's hard to see the way out lots of times. So, yeah, that is that intensity that it brings with it. So we're supposed to not be afraid. Are you afraid? Okay. Yeah. My new neighbor um, is a widow also, and she she said she gets scared in storms. And I was telling her how I, lo I love storms. I mean, I'd be out there in the rain watching it. You know? I just, it's something that I've always loved and my family has always loved. You know, they say get in the basement, we're all going, but I want to see the lightning show. And I want to, <laughs> we're just a little crazy. So she is very fearful because her husband, you know, used to make her feel safe. And now he's no longer there with her. And her grandson stayed with her for a year and a half after his death. But he's moved out too. I mean, he's he's a young man. He's in college. And the commute was just getting to be too much. So he finally got an apartment for himself. So she's there by herself. So I, I exchanged phone numbers. I said, just call me. If you're afraid, you know, we'll talk it through and don't worry about it. I said, or we can text one another, you know, it's, just, you know, whatever works. But I wanted her to feel safe because that fear, she said, it just, it's like she can't get it. She can't move. She's afraid that something's going to happen. I'm going, it's going to be okay. Storms come, storms go. You don't have to worry about it. So I'm hoping that the next time we have a storm, we've only had snow, which she said doesn't really bother her. There's no thunder and lightning. So, or not usually. <laughs> but she, uh, she's my next project. She belongs to a denomination that doesn't really value a relationship with Jesus as much as, you know, you do nice things for people. You have something to add, Paul? No. Huh? No. It's, uh, if you're, you know, if you're worried about uh, speaking in front of a crowd, you'll, you're going to worry about it, but you'll go ahead and do it. Yeah. If you have a fear of speaking in front of a crowd, you're not going to do it. Period. Right. You can't drag them out of. Fear keeps you from doing things. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> when I was in my first precept class. Um, Jan Pretty was the leader. She was a, uh, well, for many years, she was a trainer for Precept. She was on staff. And she was a wonderful teacher. And I thought, I love this, but I want to leave my job. And I want to I want to stay home so I can go to Bible studies and I can take care of my kids. My daughter was in junior high. And I don't know about you, but junior high is way worse than I thought the elementary school, they have good elementary care, but junior high, nope. And I wanted her to be able to do things. And so um, I really wanted to stay home and they had the opportunity to learn to be a, t a leader in precept. And I thought, oh, great. That means I'd have to talk in front of everybody. And even worse, I would have to pray in front of people. And I never did that. I I mean, talk about quiet. I didn't even talk in class. Can you imagine me sitting in class and not talking? It was just, you know, I was I was just sitting there going, I don't know if I can do this or not. And she said, you know, I think, you know, you, you would be good, you know. Why don't you go ahead and try it? And my daughter and son and I go, do it, Mom, you know. So I went ahead and I took the training. Well, you didn't have to speak in it was just training. You sat there and took notes. 
I can do that. <laughs> and then they came to me and said, okay, we're going to do a study and we're going to have five classes because we had five leaders who were made out of this training class, which was great. I mean, five leaders, that's awesome. And we were going to do the book of Revelation. Okay. My first course. <laughs> and I never studied Revelation. <laughs> I had no clue. Well, it was a brand new course that Precept was teaching and she was, Jan was always on top of things. She wanted that first course to be Revelation. They were actually writing the next part of Revelation while we were doing the first part. So we'd wait until they finished and then we'd start the next. It was a riot. But I thought, how in the world am I going to speak in front of these people about something I know nothing about? <laughs> well, God provided with five leaders, we had meetings and we talked with each other. We talked about how we would present things. And I finally sat there in front of the class and said, hi, I'm Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a couple of friends in my class, which was awesome. They were so supportive and they, you know, helped me out. But, but God moved me from there. But let me tell you, at the end of the first course, I had to go to the hospital. I had tremendous problems with stress. I mean, it was just making me sick. And after I talked with Jan, because she came to visit me, I said, it's just because of the course. I held in all that stress, you know, and I tried to do the very best. And she goes, no problem. You're going to be great. Let's do part two. <laughs> But sometimes you need somebody like that and God will provide them, won't he? Yes. So if you're fearful, pray about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I prayed a whole bunch about it. <laughs> and God will provide what is necessary if that's his will for you. And obviously he wanted me to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to talk in front of people. And pray. And pray in front of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's. I cannot tell you the fear. I, I mean, I was just tripping over my words all the time. I was sure that these people thought I had lost my mind trying to pray. But you guys have put up with me for a long, long time. So it must work. But fear is something that comes from Satan, doesn't it? Doesn't he want you to be afraid? Sure, because if you're afraid, you're not going to step out in faith. You, you're not trusting God if fear is what's in charge of your life. So don't be afraid. And if you are afraid, number one, confess it to God. Tell him you're afraid. Mm -hmm. Is he going to not know about it and go, oh, I didn't know you were going to be afraid about this. No. <laughs> he knew the whole thing. And he's already planned something for you. Mm -hmm. Just trust him. It works. Trust me. Mm -hmm. I really struggled with it, but he just met me at every single time I would cry out to him. I mean, mm -hmm. cry out to him. Mm -hmm. He really, really wants you to share that with him. And then he gets to bless you with something awesome that you thought, how in the world am I going to do this? And God just surrounds you with his grace. Mm -hmm. So word of encouragement. You too can do anything God wants you to do. <laughs> what are you supposed to do about Giving. Who are you supposed to give to and why? How would giving to charity or the needy be a good thing to do? Okay. Chapter one of James, <laughs> and this is true religion, <laughs> right? Visit the widows and the orphans. Are those needy people? Yes. Giving to them, you're giving your time, but it's the same idea. You're giving to them. What else does it tell people when you are giving? Okay, it shows you have a heart and a compassion. Is that a natural human trait? No, it's not. 
we are naturally very selfish beings. But as we give, aren't we showing that we trust God's going to take care of us? Yeah. You know, do you really need six winter coats? You know, I know one's black, one's brown, one's red, you know, and there's a long one and a short one. And yeah, you know, I can justify it. <laughs> but you don't need them. One coat will certainly do you. That's pretty good. <laughs> Although I can't live that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we do know that by giving to other people, are, aren't we blessed? I mean, doesn't it make you feel good when you know that you've shared something with somebody? You know, even if it's just cookies you're giving them, you know, just something that, you know, didn't really cost you anything. It's just something you wanted to share. And that also is treasure in heaven, isn't it? Because that's going to last. And I want to thank our brother again for baking those loaves and bread. Oh, <laughs> they are a blessing. Thank you. Yes. I, I love those things. <laughs> yep. So this is all about our heart, isn't it? Yes, I'm sorry, Vivian. Give, 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 and you don't get anything in return, and that's okay, isn't it? Your reward will come into heaven. Yeah. I think you're getting something in return when you're living and you can get up and you can breathe and you got a roof over your head and you're getting something. Yes. You know, you may not be getting what you what you want. Mm -hmm. But there again, you're selfish because you're looking at someone else judging what you should have. Yeah. You know, so she just got a brand new car or whatever and I can't get it. Or as you said, she's got seven coats and I only have one. Yeah. But you are you are blessed. And um I, I, I thought about that when I was in a class and it's interesting how um because of the weather, if you're not talking about a person, you're talking about the weather. So I don't want to talk about the animals. And we're part of gossip. And so the thing was, they were sitting there talking, and everybody was like, oh, I can't wait for sun to come. This weather's been so bad. And I was thinking, but who makes the weather? Yeah. God makes the weather. Stop complaining. He has a reason. <laughs> yes. He's always going to need it. He's going to wash the street. It's, gonna, it's all, and we don't think about things like that. Because, yeah, we're tired of, I hate gloomy days. I love the sun. Yeah. But it's God's doing. Nobody can make the weather but God. Yes. And so we are blessed. No matter what, you are blessed. Even when you take your last breath, you are still blessed. Absolutely. And we need to be reminded of that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because we do get, you know, I want this. Yes. If it's really from the heart, you shouldn't give and expect something in return. Right. The idea is that you're just giving because God gave all this stuff to you. May as well share. Don't do that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yes, we are to give and it will make us feel wonderful and it will be a treasure in heaven. Plus, it's going to be a treasure in that other person's life. That person may not have ever had something like that given to them. And you never know what kind of blessing you're providing. So the problem with the rich that James is talking about is they have the wrong heart, don't they? And they have the wrong focus. Their focus is on profit. Their focus is on building themselves up. Um, in Luke 12, 35 through 40, what's our focus supposed to be? We're supposed to be ready for the return of the Lord. Isn't that what we're looking forward to? Absolutely. And when is that going to happen? No one knows. <laughs> no one knows. So we have to be ready all the time. And you shouldn't worry about it 
just be ready. How do you get ready for the Lord's return? Help others. Mm -hmm. Make your focus on loving God and loving others. Mm -hmm. Those are the two great commands that we are told to obey. Mm -hmm. So the one who does what is right is the one who is going to be prepared when Jesus comes. And notice that these people that James wrote to, they didn't see Jesus returning, but they were looking for it. That's what their focus was supposed to be. Now, does James mention anything about being faithful in his letter? How can you be faithful according to James 1? And doing what God asks you to do. Okay. And doing what uh, pleases him. Because what pleases him, then pleases you too. Yes. You put your heart in line with his and say, if you're happy, I'm happy. You're also supposed to count it all joy in trials. Isn't that being faithful? Because that's what we're supposed to do. If you lack wisdom, what do you do? Okay. And if you're in... <laughs> yes, ask for patience too. <laughs> Okay, and if you're under a trial, what is it that you're supposed to do besides consider it joy? Be steadfast. Yeah. Stay there. Do what God tells you to do. Mm -hmm. And if you hear the word of God, what are you supposed to do? Do it. When you, you all went to church, you heard the word of God, you do it. Okay, and if you're poor in the world, you might be rich in God's world. So you don't have to worry about being poor in the world. If you're rich in, in God's world, that's perfect. It does sometimes sound like God's going, I really want my heaven to be full of poor people. But really, he doesn't mind, you know, if you have riches, he can use those too. So those who aren't faithful, according to Luke 12, 41 through 53, this is where the master has the vineyard, and he's, you know, given it to the tenants. And then he went away. And how did the tenants treat the people that he sent back to give them the word? Killed them, didn't they? Yep, ran them out. So they didn't look forward to his return because they knew they had done badly. Um in this passage, Jesus says that he came to bring division on the earth. He's dividing between the faithful and those who are not believers, who would not be faithful. So in James, we have the same sort of thing. We have doers versus who, who's the opposite of the doers? <laughs> the hearers only. Yes. Um, we have the rich and the the wise, the ones who are not wise or foolish, those who show partiality and those who don't show partiality, right? Okay. The proud, yeah, the proud, the arrogant, and the humble. So we see these divisions all the time, and it is all based on who Jesus Christ is. Any questions about these few verses that we had? There's an awful lot of stuff in there. And you might want to read it over again just to make sure that you didn't miss anything. Okay, we're going to start on, lesson, on chapter 5. Next week, we've got four more weeks. Four more weeks. And then we'll be done. Let's go ahead and uh, take a break, and then we'll get our video started.